Humans around the world have nutritional needs supplied by dairy products such as milk. Developing nations, depending on livestock for milk, have supply issues. So the question is, can plant-based milk come to the forefront to meet these supply needs? Well, joining us to discuss further is Favo Ogunirai, analyst at Financial Derivatives Company Limited. Favo, you're welcome. Good morning to you. Good morning. Thank you so much for joining us. So, um, as far as plant-based milk is concerned with, the, with respect to um, supply and looking at, I guess, growth projections, what are the growth drivers? Maybe you can help us first define what it is for getting into, um, getting into the growth drivers. Okay, so first of all, um, plant-based food or products are plants basically derived from, veg from vegetable plants such as vegetables, legumes, seeds, and all of that. And the reason, and the, there's an increase in the demand in that dish, in that industry, and it has been projected to grow at a compound annual rate of 16% of 12% in about six years. Okay. And the reason for this growth can be categorized into health reasons and also environmental reasons. So talking about the environment, um, when you are producing animal-based products, you would require more resources and even, and it also produces high gas, greenhouse gas emissions. And we are talking about resources, we're talking about land, energy, and even water. And that can also lead to deforestation and contribute to climate change. So when producing plant-based um, products, it doesn't require it it um, produces lower greenhouse gas emissions, which is like more is environmentally favorable. So that people that people are people that are looking at the environmental issues tend to like buy and demand for plant-based products. And also we also have the health reasons. You know, plant-based products are low in cholesterol, low in fats, rich in vitamins, and they reduce the risk of diseases. So and basically, if there's an improvement in the wealth and the general wellness of a person, we expect we expect the life expectancy to increase. So I guess these are the reasons why we are seeing like those are the, those are the things driving growth for the demand in that industry. Fantastic, great stuff. Thank you for that uh, in-depth explanation. Uh, Elon Musk has been making headlines talking about the energy requirements and what the uh, production of Bitcoin, mining of Bitcoin has been doing to the environment. Um, but for a, a plant-based and dairy, um, the dairy industry, there's a big gap, right, as far as uh, uh, the market cap or market share is concerned, right? But it seems that there have been some notable investments in the plant-based milk industry. Uh, what, what does that mean for the industry, for those investments going in that direction? I mean, it's a big threat to the um, dairy industry because we're talking about like the in venture capital investment in plant-based industry has increased. We're talking about Nestle's um, launch of Wonder, which is a pea-based milk, and also Oatly's plan, IPO plan. Um, and that would value the company at about $10 billion. So it's a huge threat to the industry because even aside the health and environmental um, reasons that people demand for plant-based, we also see that these companies are improving the product. So they are improving the taste in order to attract a broader market. They are improving the um, institutional value and they are also having strategic partnerships with coffee shops so that people can easily incorporate um, plant-based um, meals into their diet, basically. So it's a huge threat, even though it doesn't, ne like, it can't eradicate dairy, but it's a huge threat for the industry. And what dairy market has done now as a defense strategy is to, um, they're, they're do, there's this terminology and legal case where they want the two products to, it should have distinct, like, characteristics or packaging. So I, I think that helps with psychology in a way, because if you're saying you don't want plant-based milk to be identified as milk or plant drinks, so for me, I'm like, if I see a product identified as plant drink, I'm like thinking of a grain smoothie or something. So I feel like that way is a strategy, but then how sustainable it is, I really don't know. But these investments are a huge threat to the industry, definitely. All right, all right. Thanks for that. It's, it's going to be very interesting seeing where things go in that direction uh, moving forward. Um, you mentioned a couple um, products, um, one from Nestle and I guess the other company looking at uh, IPOs. What, what, are the, what about the health benefits if you compare that to what dairy provides? 
Uh, this is for the Nestle, uh, the Wu, the, the Wu, uh, the Wunda. I almost said Wu Tang Clan, but the Wunda. Go ahead. What about the health, uh, health benefits? Well, Nestle launched Wunda, which is a pea based milk and it's derived from yellow peas. And what that gives is it's high in calcium, it's high in protein, and so um, humans can benefit from that and it's quite versatile so it can be incorporated into recipes and all of that so these are these are the things they stand to benefit from mm, interesting what about threats the, the dairy industry is still dominant right um but and i even though the compound annual growth rates what do you say 16 percent uh 12 percent 12 percent compound annual growth rate double digits healthy good but there have to be some headwinds or some threats that the plant-based um milk industry Although, because we're showing, you know, folks milking cows, <laughs> which is animal based for our viewers. However, what, what are the threats and what are the headwinds um, with that respect to plant based? Um, when plant based has to do, it involves a lot of processes, and so that will require investment in technology, and that will also increase the cost of production. And that cost can triple down to the cost of the product itself. So, that way, it can discourage, you know, people who want to, compared to me, just buy dairy off the shelf or something. So there is that investment um, cost going on there. And you also have the fact that you you work with raw commodities. So there's this risk of chemicals, residues, and all of that there. So that is also a threat that could that's, that they're facing in the industry as well, so. Okay, good stuff. Now, a favor I have to ask, um, because when you think about where we are, this is a developing economy, right? There's high levels of poverty, right? There's a lot of people struggling to make ends meet. There is the sense that this plant-based conversation and all vegan movement is more for the elites, right? How, how do you think that this can take off? Because you just mentioned significant investments from different companies, and as the headwinds, you also talked about cost structures. And the average man on the streets in a nation like in Nigeria or other developing countries, do you think they would be, you know, admit or rather gravitate towards plant-based or would they just want to milk their cows and just I keep mean, drinking dairy from, you know, what do you think? The gravitation is quite still far-fetched for Nigeria. Aha, okay, so that's factual, all right. it's expensive, all right. really, and I'd rather just go to the shop, get my <laughs> pig and my... dano or something. Exactly, right. So, so there's some challenges there. Yes. Good stuff. Well, it's a very healthy conversation, and we'll have to see how things uh, move forward with that respect. All right, uh, Fever Ogunari, uh, analyst with Financial Derivatives Company Limited, thank you so much uh, for joining us to talk about plant-based milks.